Are y'all excited for NBA 2K20 news? Me too, man. But we haven't been getting much of it until today. So I was kicking back, I was doing my thing. It was a splendid afternoon in Atlanta. And out of nowhere, Nadex puts out this tweet. Ronnie just said he's focusing on my career more than neighborhood LMFAO. State your sources, Nadex. Hi. Where you getting that information from? It's not a good look. I'm gonna keep it a bean. My career is not my thing. Listen, I'm an online kind of guy. So I found out Ronnie was streaming on Caffeine TV, so I tuned in. Hey, I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all though. I didn't record the first five, 10 minutes. I didn't think he was gonna say all the juicy stuff, right? My bad. <laughs> he was just saying things about 2K and I was like, what? So I wanted to double check what Nadex was saying. I stuck around in the stream and this is what Ronnie said. So career mode is your is, is the thing you're career most excited to about. Me, the, I mean, look. Everything's got its thing, but career is, my, is the beacon this year for me. Just because I thought we would get back to basketball, it's important to do that. Ah, see, I probably didn't think of that. He just wants to get back to basketball. What the f does that mean, Ronnie? God damn, he's so big. So the interesting point is, Ronnie said this same thing to me on a stream a month ago. So it almost feels like a talking point, which means it's probably an important point of focus. My career. Oh my God, man. Hey, I've never played games by myself. My whole life growing up, it was either with my brother or online against other people. So I don't even like playing offline. That's not even gaming to me, but that's just me. And apparently a lot of other people because my team and the park are the most popular modes. All right, Ronnie already knows that. There's no point in me screaming that to the top of my lungs. So the stream went on and there was a lot of juiciness and some drama. Ronnie was taking shots for some reason. Nobody asked him to, he just decided to do it. Um. It's a year-to-year -year game, and I don't think anybody innovates as much as us. There's a, another game coming out this week that uh, doesn't sound like it's innovated very much, so... <laughs> uh, we're gonna leave it right there. Well, you know how I feel about that. God, would I, would I love a football game. Man. It just sucks. Honey, do you like streaming, my guy? Cause you're coming with no energy, G. This is your stream. Come on, my guy. Why do you boot the stream up if you don't like the stream, man? Hey, that's besides the point. If I didn't know better, I think he's talking about Mass Effect 3. <laughs> Some shots are being thrown, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm all here for it. So Shake decided to ask Ronnie about getting more games on the park. Because I have a YouTube logo, I don't have to worry about that. But for most people, it takes a long ass time. And apparently, Ronnie has a solution that none of us have thought about before. Yes, that's what he said. Talking about how all that stuff is gonna be handled. So this this is all your speculation and I appreciate it. Um, right. When you see what, what we end up doing, I think you'd be like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. Remember, well, you and I have talked about this a million times. Years ago, when you were at your first my team, uh, community team up, you would have never concepted the park. You would have never concepted what? it. What? Like this is so prolific in their innovation, ladies and gentlemen. The way they take modes that existed in previous years and then take them away from the game and then reintroduce them in two to three years. Wow, that is a prolific level of innovation, ladies and gentlemen. And yo, I didn't count, but if I had to guess, he used the word innovation at least 45 times that stream. So Shake asks, hey, how can we get more games so people aren't waiting on the park? He even brought up the idea of matchmaking. I didn't record this part, that's my fault. And Ronnie2k kind of whiffed. He parried the idea of matchmaking saying, that's basically the Jordan Rex. What? Ronnie, do you think park matchmaking is the Jordan rap? Are you good, my guy? Those are totally different things. If you don't want to do park matchmaking, at least fix the my court. It's ass! So it kind of shot me in the heart because one of the things I was most excited for was park matchmaking. And based on the way he answered the question, it's highly unlikely we see something like that. All right, so how are we going to solve it? How are we going to do this? a big problem, right? We need people to have more games more consistently. You could hide the ranks, hide the rep. Apparently Ronnie does not like that idea. And he has an idea way better. And guys, when you see the idea, you're gonna be blown away because you couldn't have even conceived of the idea yourself. That's kind of how the whole stream went. Shake was like, hey, this could, this could solve a problem that exists. And Ronnie was like, mm -mm, we have an idea you haven't even thought about yet. <laughs> Ronnie also mentioned that he didn't want to split the population of people 
when affiliations were brought up. Based on the way he talked about it, affiliations is most likely not gonna return. Now, I'm not even a fan of affiliations like that, but I see why people want it back. But based on the way he even answered that question, I highly doubt we're gonna get more servers. So if you're playing in North America, you can expect one NA West server and one NAE server. While most other games like Rainbow Six or Apex Legends have a server in Dallas, Virginia, Miami, LA, Portland, we got two! And that's why it's so delayed! It's not a hard fix, it literally just costs money. Amazon has all the infrastructure already. We always have innovative ways. People always go back to the past, right? Like they're always like Jordan challenges or we want crew or we want affiliations or we want whatever it is. We always have a more innovative way of doing things. I remember talking to you about uh, what ended up being the neighborhood before the neighborhood came out. And you, I was like, what if everybody got to play against everybody? And that what I was alluding to was was the neighborhood. On a very funny point, and I very much so wish I recorded this, but this was before I started recording. Ronnie said, and I quote, the servers have been very, very good in 2K19. That's a real quote. It's not me making that up. And yo, as much as I want to drag on them for saying something crazy like that, they kind of were. They kind of were, just a little bit. I mean, they were horrible in the standard of any other game on the planet, but relative to any other 2K, they weren't that bad. But I don't know if y'all remember 2K17 or even 2K18. Somehow, yeah, he's not wrong. 2K19 was an improvement. That's what it's come to, ladies and gentlemen. He's not wrong. <laughs> okay, so this part was where it got pretty juicy because he actually kind of answered a question instead of parrying it for once. This had to do with the archetype system being different in NBA 2K20. Archetypes in a way are popular, but they're also not popular in a way, I get it. Uh, because it's limiting to what some, like how do you build, how do you build, say, a Russell Westbrook, right? Like, what right. is that archetype? I hear that, and I think that there's going to be innovative ways for us to handle. We wanted to get it back to the, the theme of this year, and I'm going to say it a million times, is getting back to the core of basketball. So we should be allowed to allow you to make builds that are a little bit more authentic to, to basketball as opposed to just being this, like, strict archetype type thing. So I think the builder is going to be something that people are going to play a lot, the, the demo. So Ronnie verified, confirmed 1 million percent that that my player builder is going to be in the demo, that we're going to get a chance to play around with it a lot so we don't have to keep creating new accounts like in previous years with the prelude. But more importantly, every single year with the game, it's felt like we've gone down this narrow path where you can only do one thing with your build unless it's just broken cheese like the stretch bigs dribbling across the court in two dribbles. I love like that. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was one of the people in 2K15 and 16 saying, yo, you shouldn't be able to do everything with a build. And people were, at least the best players were. But now that I've gotten a chance to experience what it's like to only be able to do one thing, yes, please rewind the clock. I don't even want to do this no more. And apparently Ronnie agrees, which is by the way, a huge shift because the ongoing conspiracy was that 2K gives you a narrow career path so that you have to spend $50 each time just to try something new. Cause you can't try what a glass cleaner is like unless you spend 50 on the build and then grind the badges and grind the attributes and then you could experience it. So so it's one of those changes where it's like, it could maybe hurt 2K when it comes to microtransactions. And we know how they don't like that. Um, I would show you the clip about crossplay, but why are y'all even asking? This is 2K. They can't even do park events right, all right? They're not getting crossplay in the game. Ronnie damn near verified that himself. He said they experimented with it, but he doesn't know what they're doing with it right now, which probably means that they thought about it in the boardroom and said, no, that idea, it's horrible, it takes too much work and effort. Which is interesting, because Epic Games, the creators of Fortnite, literally made their code open source, so anybody else can use it for free. Shout out to those guys, man. Shout out to those guys. Uh, there was an awkward situation I want to turn your attention to next. Yeah, I don't want somebody to just spend money and then be as good as I am. Like, I don't like that idea. Yeah. That I, I didn't like that in 14, I think well, it was you 14. also probably want to reward somebody who's played a, a thousand right. hours versus a hundred hours. <laughs> Sorry, it's always funny to me when microtransactions are brought up because although Ronnie doesn't benefit from the microtransactions, he's forced to defend it because it's his company. And it's always a very awkward, tense moment, in which case he dodged the question. Ah! 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 This was an actual 
actual quote when uh, Shakedown asked about private matchmaking to improve the rate of games, etc. This is a quote I wrote down. This is real. Can't do anything about people being wussies. That's what you think the problem is, Ronnie? The people are being wussies? Ronnie, if you put me on League of Legends, a game I've never played before, and you put me against the highest ranked guy, I'm not sticking around. That's not because I'm a wussy. It's because I didn't dedicate my life to this, so I don't want to play it. So how do you improve the rate of games being played? You don't blame the guys that don't want to play. There's obviously something wrong systematically with the game. All right. At the end of the day, he can't talk about much on a stream. So he's trying to deflect as much as he can until it's time to talk about some of these things. But at the same time, you can't call people wussies. That's not the right answer. And probably the last thing I want to bring up on this stream before we get to the next news is this clip. I'm going to be really excited. 41 days left. Let's start talking about features at length. Um, you know, first feature potentially this week. So, it's a lot coming. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty exciting. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know what the first thing is that's usually announced in NBA 2K? Do the Jeopardy music when I walk, when I do the Jeopardy music. Yes, correct, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is my GM, which means we might potentially see some my GM news in the next week. All right, so maybe you watched that interview and you were like, hmm, maybe they're gonna scale back on microtransactions this year. Yo, there was this article that dropped, no cap, that said EA's ultimate team modes across all their games have made 28% of their total net revenue. <laughs> Think about how crazy that is. Okay, check this out. EA is the eighth biggest video game company on the planet, and over a quarter of their income is a game mode. EA's live service revenue across all games represented 45% of their total fiscal year 2019, which means the actual purchase of the game was only half the money they made that year. Think about that. So when you have a fantasy about any one of these companies, take two EA or Activision, scaling back on microtransactions, think again. They will do as much as you let them do because there's no way their shareholders are gonna let them give away 50% of their damn company. For what? Us measly gamers, are you crazy? That's such an insane number to think about. Sorry for deflating hope, guys. <laughs> All right, so this was like a couple weeks old news, but in case you didn't hear, there was a high school that just decided to leak some information. Churchland Athletics put out this tweet saying, breaking news, alert emoji, the Churchland High School gym will be featured on 2K20 as part of the My Player model. So excited to be a partner with 2K Sports. We'll be giving away free copies of NBA 2K20 as I, I, I so you might be wondering, huh, why, why, why would this high school post that? Is this legitimate and what does this mean? I have all three of those answers for you today. Someone linked me and said, yo, agent, check this out. Apparently 2K is gonna feature a high school again. Nah, it's gonna be the PIT invitational portion that takes place at my high school gym. Apparently this guy goes to the high school. He's giving us info. So it's not like actual gameplay that will feature them. It's a college tournament for college prospects who are on the cusp of getting drafted. Players like Jimmy Butler, Kyle O'Quinn, James Ennis, Damari Carroll, to name a few, played in this invitational. So they've had high schools in previous 2Ks before. Each year, the My Career story is different. And as we just heard, my career is apparently the focus. So we don't even know what that means yet. Uh, so shout out to that high school for deciding to leak that randomly a couple weeks ago. <laughs> then some more information dropped this time again on Twitter. A fan sent a tweet to LD2K saying, in the demo this year, will we have a free space, my core, to try out our builds and dribbles if we wanna be able to play with our friends there? And LD2K responded saying, we wanted to do this thing right for the fans. All I can say for now with the wink emoji. Do you remember how annoying it was in previous years to just do that? to try different builds. You had to sit through the boring story mode just to try an archetype. And even then the sliders were completely off. So it's not indicative of anything the real game would mean. You mean to tell me we could use a my core and test jump shots and dribble moves to see if we like a build before we spend money on it? Hold on, wait a minute. I have to stroke my beard real quick. Doesn't that mean there might be less microtransactions for NBA 2K? I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all. This is not adding up to me. I refuse to believe that 2K has become wholesome, or at least a little bit more wholesome. And then two weeks ago, LD2K verified that L2 Cheese will not be returning to 2K20, which means 
they must have changed something fundamentally with the dribbling system. He was responding to a tweet from Pisteria who said, I have come to the realization that this game takes zero skill, with the clip of uh, a people on the twos just L2 cheesing to get buckets. Each year, 2K promises that the skill gap is gonna be bigger, and in reality, it's a very difficult thing to accomplish on a, on a, on a sports game, very, very difficult. So will they accomplish it? I don't know. Stay tuned on the next episode of NBA 2K21. Or two. Even developers like the Czar were tweeting, just FYI, even I'm like, dang, when are they, 2K, going to start dropping info on the game? It's like a month away from launch. We don't know a thing about it. <laughs> it's 2019, ladies and gentlemen, where you don't know a thing about the game, but yet you can pre-order it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll keep it a holy thousand with you guys. I really hope my career is not the focus this year. For me, the replay value is not there. I barely make it through the first time, to be honest with y'all. I'm really just trying to get to the online part of things. I mean, a whole lot of other things have happened in the last couple weeks. They announced a soundtrack to the game. They, I mean, that might have been it, actually. <laughs> so I guess we just sit and wait until we hear about my GM, I guess. Hey, I'm back to making consistent videos. Even ask Ronnie. Subscribe to the channel. That wasn't Ronnie. That was me. Hey, drop a like or click on one of the four videos. Yo, that you know that loser do with acne named Davis? He thinks he has more Instagram followers than me. That's not cool. Instagram is in the description. Go ahead, follow that. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs>